how could we take the concept of the delta, low cost, entry level, scalable, and move it into something that's more in line with Dynavat products? What are we going to do? How are we going to do it? We've got to get this going. By the time we were hitting March and April, it was becoming very evident that the market needed a lower cost product, that our company needed a lower cost product in order to remain relevant and viable in this rapidly changing market. So in talking, you know, other owners, the management, the company, and, you know, we decided let's look at any alternatives that we can come up with. That evolved, you know, to, okay, well, what if we just take liner tube we have laying around and, you know, we'll expand the bore, dress up the outside and perforate the airport hole. Internally, we referred to this as the Minium. Very low number of parts. Everything is O-ringless fitment, so there are zero O-rings on this device. Silicone itself would hold the condenser in. The tip was press fit in, so that it didn't require any sort of O-rings. We had titanium, messed around with that at first, got some stainless, messed around with that. The majority of this device, or at least the body of it, was created on the same machine that would have done the Delta prototype. Taking what we've learned from this and trying to turn it into this. It's a lot like our liner tube that we get in titanium we use for the Vong. So as you can see, the number of parts did start to increase a little bit. Uh, in my right hand here, we have a standard M condenser with, in this case, a TPU melt piece. Uh, that was just for prototype purposes. We have silicone variants of this that were meant to be the end game for the prototypes. So when you set this thing down on a flat surface, it doesn't roll, and you, as you can see, the tip stays elevated. Then we have the condenser subassembly. We'll kind of slide that into the body midsection here. We were able to take a larger diameter tube where the inside diameter of the tube is just slightly smaller than the mating part of the tip. There was a lot of initial concern about something like that. Would the tip just you know, fall out right on somebody as it, it's hot? But good amount of testing done there and we were pretty, pretty assured that the tip wouldn't just kind of fling itself out at any given point. It makes for a very, very rigid and surprisingly Strong connection. That is where the original prototypes for that half bowl, more efficient and optimized tip really started. If we're gonna machine one part, it might as well be a tip because that's the heart of the product. How do we take everything we've learned since we started this process, all the various tips and designs that we've made over the years, change it up, but also make the functionality as good, if not potentially even slightly better than anything else we've made, especially for a person that doesn't have any experience with our product. So this is a lot different than what we've done before. Previously, we typically put a bunch of fins in, cut a whole bunch of mass out. How many fins does our tip really need? And originally, we got rid of all of them. What if we just machined a really cool five-sided hourglass profile? See how that worked. And it worked okay but it just wasn't great. And the heat transfer was a little bit more than what we wanted. What we did differently with this unit is we made it a half bowl chamber. So it's about half the size as the one in the M. Initial reactions were of concern that they weren't gonna be big enough, that it wasn't gonna do what people wanted it to do. Doing internal testing, distributing devices out to folks you know, at Dynavap and, and kind of getting their feedback. We're definitely our own worst critic. And so we ran off a few. We took them home, we tried them out. The consensus the next day was a very strong, oh yeah, that's much better. I found that you get a really nice draw, really nice hit the first heat cycle. Okay, you don't have to heat past the click or anything like that. It's not gonna go and burn if you go like a second past the click or anything. There's a lot more mass to, to heat there, so it's a little more forgiving in that sense. But the mass, nearest the chamber actually really helps reduce the learning curve for folks that, you know, are just kind of trying to get their feel of, you know, putting the torch and where to put that, fl that flame front and uh, where to heat it and, you know, respect the click and all of those things. As we continue to think through and talk through, it became more clear that the primary goal is to make a very simple, durable, and easy to use product that just generally functions well for the largest demographic possible. It's just more forgiving, and it gives the user really good draw, really good vapor experience the first time. You, you know, it's harder to screw up. For the rest of this 
beta testing. We're going to stick with the plan. We're going to stick with this really cool five-sided single fin tip. The tip can be made on essentially four different CNC's out there. I'm making it on one right now. Fast part, faster than any other tip we've ever made. And we're not limited, we have backups. And if we need more volume, we just start turning on the other equipment, making that part. We have come up with a design optimized for these machines to manufacture these tips more quickly, more repeatably, without compromising any quality. The feedback that I've gotten so far is people love the tip. Cap, of course but they're really not in love with the stem. People like the silicone mouthpiece, but they didn't care so much for the transition between the silicone mouthpiece, the metal body, and another silicone piece that we placed near the tip. They didn't think the direction that this was taking was A, aesthetically pleasing, or B, scalable enough that we could produce enough of them in the time that we really needed. Didn't quite feel Dynavap quality. It didn't quite have that desirable look, you know, and feel, and it just felt cheap, people said. Too cheap, I guess. Looking back through that feedback, there was a lot of benefits that we and our users did see in a stem design, something like this. The anti-roll design being one of the biggest ones, the 10 millimeter taper as well. But there is a lot to be desired, both aesthetically and from a manufacturing standpoint. It was relatively difficult to produce, but theoretically, once we had everything optimized, they would be quick, but we saw a lot, a lot of challenges in place to do something like that. And that's why we, we do what we do, and then we share it, and we get the feedback, and we go, okay, well, let's go to plan C.